It's the story of my vacation. Why, how, where, the whole story. So sit back and relax. So about the end of last summer, I was sitting there and I was like, I don't want to be in Oregon for the centered on the winter solstice a month before and a month after. And this is because this is when the worst time to live off grid. So my living situation is very difficult during the winter. Like I, I don't have an indoor shower. I bathe outdoors every day, <laughs> regardless of the weather. In the snow, in the ice, bathing outdoors for years, okay, four years. Matter of fact, I hadn't had a shower from a real shower in three and a half years when I got to the first hotel in this adventure, right? Three and a half years pouring buckets on my head, okay? So I had just paid off my backhoe. I had just eliminated my, my, my uh, cannabis bill. I grew a huge crop and bought a rosin press and so just eliminated, uh, you know, two, three hundred dollar maybe a month uh, bill that I spend on weed, right? So, and then in that duration, uh, in the last month before winter solstice and the following month after that, I burn more gas for the generator because the light, you know, I have to run generator like pretty frequently, you know, it's all up to the clouds and all this, but it's pretty, in that span, it's very frequent, right? So there's that, the, genera the generator usage and toll. So that has a value of, uh, I don't know how much money I would have spent on generator oil changes and gas changes, but I would have spent a chunk. I would have spent a chunk on propane. When the, when the temperature gets down to freezing, uh, it's burning a whole entire five, uh, they hold like four and a half gallons, but so like an uh, entire four and a half gallon tank of propane every single day, plus propane to cook and heat water with, okay? So the propane bill for those two months is huge, gas, propane, okay? Now, the just the mental uh, toll it takes basically to deal with that. It's, it's just, it's brutal and it's been brutal for years. Like, I don't look forward to this and this whole time that I've owned this property, all the worst things that have happened to me have happened in that freaking time frame. My place burned down, battery last year, the battery went out. Uh, yeah, I can just go over. So it's just a lot of bad things happen right there and around that time, okay? So I just wanted to be gone, right? So now I'm a stoner. So I, well, how am I gonna go on a stoner vacation? Stoner vacations are pretty much Jamaica and Amsterdam. Okay, well, I'm trying to get away from the darkness, so Amsterdam's not gonna work. Jamaica, and then uh, some might say, because I read articles, that you could go to Uruguay, because it's legal there. But they legalized it in a very convoluted way that you have to sign up with the government and then they, I think they just give you weed or you buy it from them or something like this. So basically you can't travel to Uruguay as a stoner for a stoner vacation. They, they moronic shit, right? So, uh, you know, and I have made this list of things that I need and want and I made it years ago, 
you know, I had a fire, I lost everything, right? So now I gotta put my life back together. And, uh, you know, I had, I've had this list of the things that I need and I'd save up like the computer I just built or like my uh, toolboxes and things like this. And, and I put all this ahead of finishing the structure where I live because I had just been trying to finish that, trying to finish that, trying to finish that while everything else in my life was just getting disintegrated, right? Like I had no nice clothes. I had no, uh, you know, like I had one truck and stuff, you know? So I basically just had to stop the build and focus on putting my life back together, right? Okay, well, my teeth was one of those things on the list that I wanted to take care of. And it was $10,000 just for the bottom, and that didn't include any root canals. It was just the uh, one tooth being removed, four teeth being whittled down, and then this thing put in, $10,000, okay? And I was had that on my list, and I was gonna do it. Okay, well, you know, I, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about this vacation and all this and that. And I'm like, you know, what if I, you know, go to Mexico and get my teeth fixed, right? So I start searching that. I find a dentist that looks like a nice crew of people, which was like my, my, I've had horrible dentist experiences. And I just wanted like, a nice dentist that was a nice person that was, you know, and I found her. And I think that's the key because the bad dentists are men. The good dentist is a woman. Yeah. So emailed and was like, okay. And didn't have any sort of, I didn't ask prices, you know, nothing. I just made an appointment. Okay. So now I've decided I'm going to Mexico, right? Well, the hotel industry is so ridiculous with long-term stays. I think they've actually shot themselves in the foot and now they have the whole Verbo Airbnb entity to deal with because of the BS with the hotel and trying to stay longer than a month. You try to book a hotel for two and a half months and it's just not gonna let you. You gotta book it 30 days and then go another one and for another, right? Stupid. Well, Airbnb, stupid as well. Like Verbo though, Verbo, I got this place for the same price per night as the cheapest hotel on hotels.com when I was checking that, which was $40 a night right? So I got a house just way bigger than I even needed for the same amount that I was going to spend on the cheapest hotel. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't have to check out, you know, I <laughs> rented it for two and a half months and that's it, right? Nice and easy. Verbo, so much better than Airbnb. I, I, I can't say enough bad things about Airbnb, uh, Verbo is the one to use. Airbnb is garbage. Okay, so I got this place all set up, sent this place, you know, $3,300 payment months before I left. So, uh, and then my flights, I actually had a bunch of uh, miles saved up. So my flight only cost me 150 bucks. And then I had to add, I just added the flight because I was going in and out of Portland because I needed to stop in Portland before I left. So I just made the flight out of there and then commuted to Portland. And oh, it was so much extra nightmare, but I, I it was over Thanksgiving too. <laughs> I, I was looking for the cheapest flights. Oh, here's the cheapest flight, right? It's a day after Thanksgiving, <laughs> not even realizing you know what I was doing. And then I spent two months just being stressed out about leaving. I mean, it literally, I was just stressed, so stressed, it was horrible, right? Like, 
because I never go on vacations and never, you know, so there's just a whole lot of things I don't really do regularly. And I like, haven't even gone uh, on a vacation since like 2012 or 13, which was to Mexico, Rocky Point, a different, totally different scene. Mazatlan is, is a pretty cool place to come for a long term stay because it's a city and there's things going on. The Rocky Point was like a, a resort type area. So kind of got boring after a very short amount of time because it just wasn't that much, you know. I mean, it was big, like if you like uh, doom buggies and stuff like that, that's what that area is big for, but I'm not into doom buggies, so. Needless to say, this style of vacation is just way more up my alley than going to like a resort and staying in a hotel. I mean, it just, this is, this just feels more authentic, right? Like I'm here in a neighborhood and there's people and neighbors to talk to and, you know, life going on where you go to resorts and it's just like, oh, resort, 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 everybody's resort, resort, you know? It's just, I, I, I like this better by, by far. So I got here and I wasn't even here for a week and I got food poisoning from some crab. I'm pretty sure it was crab. And it was the craziest food poisoning I think I ever had because it was like up in my kidneys like, and I was shaking. I went into a pharmacy, got given uh, antibiotics, right? Started taking those. And then I had a tooth pulled. And then I got a concussion. I walked into a tree in the dark, low hanging tree across the sidewalk. I was just watching these, this little tiny dog bark at this guy. It was kind of like, <laughs> this little dog barking at this guy. But you know, it was kind of funny. And I'm just like looking and I just walked into a tree, split my head, bleeding all down and Okay, so, and that was like all in a week, a tooth pull, food poisoning, and a concussion. And that was like in the first 10 days of being here, right? So needless to say, it started off a little rough, right? <laughs> and right now, spoiler alert, I got some other infection, right? So I had like eight root canals, and after, and one of them, because my anatomy was not possible. So they did like all of it, but then didn't get the root out. So then a couple days later, I'm pretty sure I, when I walked by the sewage that had blown the street up, I think I inhaled something from the sewer and it got into my sinuses and it was right on this side, which was the last place that I had uh, root canals done, right? And so I went to the dentist, back to the dentist saying, hey, there's something wrong, okay? And that was on a uh, Thursday, right? So it was like a Tuesday when I inhaled it, Wednesday woke up with a sore throat. Just one side though, sore sinus area. The dentist gave, did x-rays to make sure there was no infection in the root canals, which there wasn't. The root canals were all just fine, but so much dental work, I had inflammation. And I think that inflammation is where the, the bug was able to take hold, okay? So I got antibiotics Thursday, took two that day, Thursday, woke up Friday feeling horrible, just sat and did nothing all day Friday, took all the antibiotics as proper. Saturday woke up, felt like perfect. Okay, great. That's when I had this done. These put in, the bottoms, right? Right now, these are temporary. I still have to, you know, get the, the finished product put in there. I'm here in a couple days. So, now I... Saturday, feeling fine. And so I've been doing a lot of walking the whole time I've been here. It's like my thing, 
just walking here, walking there, love it, right? So I'm just back to walk, walk to the dentist, walk to dinner, and my little, oh, <laughs> I was gonna show you my phone, but I'm using my phone to record. I, I did that little fitness tracker thing while I was here, right? And so I'm seeing how much I'm walking, right? And uh, so Saturday, I walk, over exerted myself. Then I went too long waiting to eat and just ended up going to wings, right? So not junk food when you're not healthy. If you're healthy, you can do junk food and, and live through it. But, <laughs> and then the third thing I did, so I did three wrong things on Saturday. Over exerted myself ate uh, junk food for dinner. And when I took the final, and this probably is the biggest one, when I took the final antibiotic pill for the day, I didn't eat enough with it. I just like, I actually took it and then ate like a little teeny handful of almonds, like right before bed, right? Well, I've messed up my stomach on medication once before after a surgery, I was given some some fucking pain pills that were that that you had to eat a lot with and I was taking probably too many and wasn't eating enough and then so it ripped the hole in my stomach and that's what happened this time. So then Sunday I felt not good, right? Like wow, and it was you know, kind of almost like having food poisoning again. That's what I likened it to when it happened to me the first time, like in 2002 or something like that, 20 years ago, right? And it was like having food poisoning. And I just had food poisoning, right? And this was, it was like having food poisoning, right? And that was Sunday. Monday, I was fully back worse than I had been, okay? So... Now I feel horrible, worse than I even did on the Friday before that I sat and did nothing. It's Monday, I get a hold of uh, the dentist and tell her what's going on and I don't hear right back from her. And then I went out to get some food and started feeling like insanely bad, like I was really worried. So I just searched for English speaking doctor found one like pretty much right, right in the same area as the dentist, right? So close, I made an appointment with him, got in there, explained to him what was happening. He was having a hard time. He's like, you gotta get splashed in the face by sewage. And it's like, man, I looked it up and it can be aerosolized and visible and you can get it. I mean, it's rare, but it can happen. You do not need to breathe in actual sewage. The air, if it's been blown up into the air, like there's sewage problems in this whole town, city, and they got cars, so they'll have a puddle on the street and cars will drive through that and splash it up in the air. Like, it's, <laughs> it's dangerous. Now, the fact that I had, you know, some... Uh, you know, some probably some swelling and stuff probably is what made my made it so it could even get in there in the first place. So if you're perfectly healthy, you can walk around and and this stuff could get in your nose conceivably and not make you sick, right? But because I had this, and this is just my best guess. Like I don't have any proof, but I don't know what else it would have been. It stayed so in one area, I mean, it got into my neck and this ear and the nostrils and the throat, but all just right here on this one side, right? Where the root canals had just been, right? They were right here and it started like in behind there, right? So now that doctor gives me different antibiotics. So the first antibiotics were like, Three, at one every eight hours with food, okay, which is super tough because you either got to stay up and eat late right before you go to bed or you got to wake up in the middle of the night and eat and then take a pill. I mean, it's, it's tough, 
right? And I messed up. <laughs> That's why. And I what I, I think I literally created a a super bug, uh, antibiotic antibiotic resistant bug. It was resistant to those first ones that I took, and it, that those weren't working anymore. Okay, which is terrifying. So then I he gave me what he called a broader spectrum and you only needed to take one a day which is <laughs> so much easier and now I've been on that for it's Saturday so Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday five days still don't feel as good as I did on that Saturday <laughs> I mean I I it's close now but I mean it's like still, you know, just don't really feel like doing much, kind of just doing a lot of sitting and, you know, watching computer, doing, playing video games, this type of thing for a week. Because at this point, I am terrified because if this thing that I basically by those three mistakes that I made, created a superbug in myself that was resistant to the antibiotics that I was on. And now I'm on these other ones and it's going away very slowly. I got like two or three more days left of these pills. And if it comes back after that, that's gonna be terrifying because like the doctor was like, then we have to go find the infection. Well, it's in my head. What do you mean go find, right? <laughs> like, that's scary. So, now what this is all, I mean, I, I came to get out of the, the darkness, okay, check. <laughs> I came to get my teeth done, check. So, the fact that I didn't get to spend the entire time feeling great, and I really didn't get to do like vacation style stuff, as much as you know, you'd know, you hope for two and a half months, but I mean, it wasn't my focus, you know, just being here, <laughs> regardless of what I was doing was the point, just being away from the dark and the rain and the snow and the ice and just taking a break from all that this year. That was really the biggest thing and then the teeth, so you know, eh, whatever. I uh, have made quite a few videos. I've planned even more videos that because I got sick, I won't be able to make those videos, unfortunately. But uh, I'm, you know, I got a pretty decent amount of videos out of the thing. And it's, uh, it's a life experience. Like I, I've called this to myself like a once in a lifetime. As much as I always wanted to be a person that traveled and go and see and experience different cultures and food and all that that comes along with vacationing, I always wanted to do that. But I just, my life never really you know, because I just work, 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 and I get focused on building something, and it's just like stopping and going and doing that. And I just never got into doing that type of stuff as a person. So I never really learned how to travel. And then, obviously, I don't even know how to be sick correctly because I made myself sicker not really going through a, the process of getting healthy appropriately, right? So this trip... I, once in a lifetime, will I ever be able to go someplace for two months and three months or whatever? And maybe, I don't know. But I definitely am glad I did it this one time. I mean, this is, it's a, it's a pretty cool town. I don't know if I would ever come back or not. I would come to live here. I think this would be a cool place to live except for the summer. Like, oh. Right? Then you just go, like if you live here, then you leave here and go north for the summer. The problem is, is that Oregon and Washington and Canada all used to just be beautiful in the summer. But now with the forest fire smoke, they're just not. It's just, it's like, ooh, you know, it's a nasty place to be when there's 
forest fire smoke all the time, right? So, and there's really not at forest fire smoke here. And, and everything's built around here. They don't even have a fire department. I haven't even seen a fire truck, a fire department, nothing, because I, I saw a house that burned and it was just the stuff inside that burned, right? The structures are all concrete, block, brick. There's nothing to burn, right? And that's <laughs> really a great way to build your city because you're never going to have to worry about it just burning down on you, right? So will this be a thing that I, 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 I so I would come to Mazatlan, Mazatlan, excuse me, to live, but I don't know if I'll come, if I would come here to vacation again, right? Because if I'm going on a vacation, then I would like to see something new, something different, get to learn a new place. This, you know, that's kind of what I think personally, which you, I've talked to a lot of people that just come here. They're like retirement age and they like buy a little place and they just come here year after year for however long that they, I was on the flight with some people. I think they were only, they owned a, a apartment here and were only coming for two weeks, two weeks. <laughs> it was like, you know, like, damn, that is, that is just, just a vacation, you know, where you can actually get away from, uh, for months. I mean, and that's what a lot of people are doing here. There's a lot of people that, that moved here because it's so inexpensive to live. I mean, you can just live here for so cheap. There's a lot of really broke white people that live here to, to just be able to live without, you know, being, you know, homeless maybe, even if some, I mean, they can come here and have a place and live and eat with their little retirement and uh, where you couldn't do that in the United States in a lot of places, right? So that's kind of why I don't think I would come back to Mazatlan, Mazatlan on a vacation, right? Now, possibly as far as like a medical vacation, Absolutely, this is the place to come for medical stuff, dental stuff. You know, out of all of uh, Mexico, there's just a really high concentration of doctors and dentists, and it's just kind of like part of the industry in this area, right? So, all right, and uh, yeah, I'm down to the last week here, and uh, you know, I I'm basically just. Uh, doing this I go a little walk <laughs> to get something but I am so terrified to like have this bug relapse a third time like I literally could be having a super bug in my body that I created inadvertently right so just chilling all right and make sure you check out all my videos from Mazatlan because you'll probably be entertained Peace. Thank you for watching.